okay, so everybody, this is Phil. Right. So he didn't think I remembered him. He came over and said, hey, do you, do you remember me? I had the yellow Buick from a couple years ago. I said, absolutely, I remember you. And to prove it, your name's Phil. That's right. There you go. Uh, everybody, uh, what do you have here today? Is this yours? Yep. This is your stage one? Another 73 stage one. This one's a four-speed, one of 92 built, one of 10 known to exist. Oh. Only 10? Yes. How did you pick this car up? Uh, it's a long story, but I bid for it on eBay, and the dealer called and said there were two bidders on it, so I backed out, and then I took the yellow Sun Coupe to a national meet, and he was there with us, said he's never going to sell the car, and sold it to me three months later. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Now, you're a Buick guy. What made you a Buick guy? I mean, you're, you're father, Buick all the way through. My father... When I was six years old in 64, bought a Buick Electra, and when you're six years old, you're kind of impressionable, and there were a couple other cool Buicks on the block where we lived in Brooklyn, and I always wanted one. So I bought one in 1977. It got stolen a year later, and like I said last time, I then went on to 20 years of road racing, and after that, I came back to Buick, and I saw these cars with a four-speed and a big block, and I said, that's what I want. See, Matt, you got to have the big block. He's like, if you want drivability, uh, drivability you got to have a small block. I'm like, no. Except I for Buicks, because like I said, the big block, the 455, weighs just as much as a small block Chevy. Right. So the handling balance is not lost. Now, the stage one feature, you said only 10, ma 10 made. Well, okay. no, 92 made with the four-speed with the stage one, but there are only 10 known to exist still around. Well, the stage one obviously is the highest state of tune then available on the 455. With net power range, it was about 260, 260. 270 horsepower, 390 torque, which comes out to basically the same as uh, the yeah. lowest horsepower ratings in 70. Yeah. Just measured it differently. Right. But it was the, the waning days of the muscle car era. So while these cars were available, you could order them. Very few were actually sold, and then the gas crisis hit. Right. And these cars were good for about 10 miles per gallon. Not that the 350s were that much better, but it seemed better. So right. people went with the uh, the more canal amical cars. But that's the main thing that sets this car apart from any other. It makes it so special. Now, 73 also is the first year of the colonnade body. Okay. Well, I say by colonnade, it's right? 71, yes, right. 73, this, this complete the revision. Style that Frame is the same style. underneath. Drivetrains are the same. But this separation here, this separate stationary window, was a design feature that was actually, people thought were ahead, was ahead of its time. The only problem with the colonnades was that they came at the wrong time. They were supposed to come out in 72. The UAW strike delayed them a year. Right. Now, now uh, Muted Eve said it's very interesting. She thinks that back window would be covered today for uh, safety, and yet it would cause a huge blind spot. Um, I'd love you to pop the hood. And uh, by the way, um, Old Boz is uh, asking us to uh, show some Australian cars, or will there be here? I don't know. Probably not today. It'd probably be tomorrow. But I don't know if there will be any Australian cars here because we haven't gone through all the cars. Very we're, hard we're to come starting. by. You're gonna have but to if you're familiar familiar with Australian cars. The Holdens of the time copied a lot of design features from the American GM cars. The Holdens, uh, like for example, there was a, a, one of the corresponding Holdens from the early 70s. If you took a look at their, the front end and then parked it next to, an, uh, to the original first generation Monte Carlo, immediately you could tell where it came from. Now, this is a Buick Grand Sport. It's a 1973 Stage 1. That is the key with, with Phil's car. What color is this again? This is Harvest Gold, and out of the 728 Stage 1s built, they only built 54 in this color. Okay, and this is one of 10. What what makes it one of 10? Uh, Matt said well, it, but... It's, it's one of 92 with the 4-speed, but there are only 10 left that are known to exist. Got it. And I would call this muted orange. Okay. That's a, it, it, is an, it does have a lot of orange in it. Now, in the 70s, did you lust after these cars? You said you saw them in Brooklyn, but, I mean, did you specifically lust after the Stage 1s? Yes. This is what I wanted. You couldn't get it in 1977 when I bought my Regal, and, like I said, when I stopped racing, I wanted a Stage 1 Buick. And Take us through the engine. Sure. Uh, it's a 455 Stage 1. They came with the chrome chrome uh, valve covers, they came with different valve springs, they came with a different camshaft, has an 800 CFM four barrel Rochester carburetor, and this car is the, the most option stage one built in 1973. It has every option except for 
cruise control, which you couldn't get with a four-speed. Well, it's funny you say that because uh, one of the viewers, actually pretty much all the viewers, want to know how many cup holders. And I'm going to guess, don't say it yet, I'm going to guess zero. Correct. Yeah. So it didn't have every option, just every option available in 1973. Right. Yeah. And, and, and what was the sticker price on this car? Uh, well... Like last time, the sticker is right there. Uh, the price on this was a little over fifty-seven, fifty-seven hundred and fourteen dollars. That was a ton of money in 1973. Yes, it was. It was a very expensive car. These were executive muscle cars, and like your friend started saying about the Colonnade, these were really the last Bill Mitchell designs before the square cars came out in uh, '78. The Regals and the Jeep Grand Nationals. So you can see it still has the Buick Spear going down. You know, it's a little, a few yeah. little styling keys. Let's now, get a shot of the interior, by the way, sure. uh, if you don't mind. Come on, guys. Let's get a good shot of the driver's seat and the gauge cluster. I love gauge clusters. I don't know about you, Phil. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're neat. Um, this didn't come with a tack, but it is a four-speed. But it's got uh, power door locks, power windows, AM, FM, 8-track, electric rear window defogger, Posi tra it, it's got, like I said, everything, and we can sit here for hours going through it. Gabe, the audience wants a shot of the gauge cluster, a good long shot of uh, the gauge cluster and the view from the driver's seat. I agree. I'm a gauge cluster guy. Okay, yeah. It, it's a really neat car when you're in it driving. It's, uh, it's like a spaceship, you know, the, how the dashboard wraps around you. I would imagine this was one of the first cars that really had the dashboard ergonomically uh, designed to kind of lean towards the driver. Correct. Right. They did that in the whole, in the full line. They started that in the 70s where they were, everything just curved around the driver, right. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, Matt is dying to say something. Yes, Matt. The sticker here. If, I was, I'm looking at the breakdown. The base price of the car is only three grand. Yeah. But the Stage 1 option, the GS Stage 1 option, with the 455 engine and the power disc brakes, the steering, the dual exhaust and everything, $536. That's Which seems very 20, re reasonable today, but was a like lot a 20% percent hike over the, over the base price. Right. right. And it's even more expensive than the air conditioning. The air conditioning went for $397. Now, do, does the air, air conditioning work? Yes, everything works on the car. Does it get cold? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, AC's... Uh, uh, is, is GM was this way is ahead of its time in terms of air I was going to say, this is your grandson. Hi. How you doing? Good. Well, what's going on? Nothing. You get to drive this ever? Uh, soon. Soon? soon. Are you really going to let him drive it? Hey, he's got six years to go, but yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, this is what you're going to learn stick on? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Verdict? Verdict? He's ready for it. Okay. Hey, wow, you got a good a grandfather there. What do you think? Are you a Buick guy? Yes. You like his car collection? Yes. You get for, you go for a ride in this thing? Yes. Does he crank it up for you? Yes. Really? Yes. You tell him, Grandpa, the pedal was meant to be buried, so bury the pedal. Yes. All right. Look at that. You're building some good memories with him. We're trying. Yeah, he's a good kid. He's uh, very into cars. He's built his own go-kart, uh, won a few prizes. Is he racing? Uh, no, he's not racing yet. That's in the future. You built your own go-kart? Yes. That's pretty cool. What do you got in there? Uh, it's like a, it's like a weed whacker motor. Yeah. Uh, we use How fast does that go? 35. 35 with a weed whacker motor. Imagine what you could do with a lawnmower motor. Right? Can you yeah. imagine? Oh, my God. 35. You ever tell him slow down? He's got six years before he gets his life. Yeah, I tell him to slow down all the time. Do you think it works? Did it work when anybody told us to slow down? No. Nope. No. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, have a good one. Enjoy the show. You're going to walk around and see some of the cars? Yes. Excellent. Very cool. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you.